Everything that happens, happens as it should. First person narrative. What a day. I am shivering, and my feet are swollen from our long, grueling march. Yet I must first attend to the needs of my master, Emperor Marcus Aurelius. We are on the northern frontier, on a campaign to put down an uprising of a rogue Germanic tribe. These barbarians fired the first salvo yesterday, raining arrows down on our brave legionnaires. Today, we move to higher ground, to gain momentum for an attack. My master is exhausted, and takes his dinner alone, without his generals. I am starving, but would not presume to eat. At least I got to taste a little beef and wine. I sample everything first in case a foe tries to poison him. I am ever vigilant to possible plots against his life, and I trust no one. We have been gone from Rome many months. Life is hard for all of us, but our monarch is benevolent and foremost a devoted thinker and philosopher. Perhaps that is why he is rarely flustered, even when facing misfortune and suffering. For if Marcus is not putting down uprisings from uncouth savages, he is placating unruly senators prone to fighting and brawling. To me, these men display a flagrant disregard for the respect due an emperor. It's appalling. The Stoic philosophy Marcus Aurelius subscribes to declares that all men are by nature equal. Bless yes, he said to me the other day. You are cold. Go and get warmer clothes. My master has nurtured my education. I have grown proficient in reading, writing, and music. Sometimes I play the lute while he converses with me. I long for our days at the imperial palace with its many luxuries. I also miss my dear friend Grumio. I rarely see him even in Rome, for he is a domestic slave in the house of a rich merchant on the other side of the city. Still, questioning my lot in life will get me nowhere. Marcus detests complaining. He has told me many times that things are as they are meant to be, so I won't incur his wrath by appearing ungrateful. Marcus Aurelius often reminds me that no man is given more hardship than he can endure. He writes daily of life's paradoxes and how to accept the idea that what looks like contradiction may be true. He says he is flawed like all men, but he has had a long reign and is strong and unbowed. As for me, I wish that I had one quarter of his fortitude and courage. A miss. A miss. A miss functions as two parts of speech. It can be an adjective, meaning faulty or imperfect. A special prosecutor may be unable to prove anything amiss in an official's performance of her or his duties. Or, a miss can be an adverb, meaning wrongly. As a famous poet once said, the best laid plans of mice and men oft go amiss. Now let's hear you say amiss. Try the word again. Brawl. Brawl. Brawl also functions as two parts of speech. It can be a noun, meaning a noisy quarrel. A wrestling match can turn into a brawl if the referee fails to enforce the rules. Or, brawl can be a verb, meaning to quarrel or fight noisily. Wild animals often brawl over food and territory. Now you try brawl. One more time. Detest. Detest. Detest is a verb, meaning to dislike very much. Types of food some people love, others detest. Or, the Bible teaches us to detest the sin, not the sinner. Now it's your turn. Say detest. And again. Domestic. Domestic. Domestic functions as two parts of speech. It can be an adjective, meaning native to a country. You may use a domestic airline to travel from New York to Houston. Or, domestic can be a noun, meaning a servant. The great mansions of the English aristocracy were kept shipshape 
by a huge army of domestics. Now you say domestic. Repeat the word. Flagrant. Flagrant. Flagrant is an adjective meaning extremely bad or scandalous. An unpopular verdict in a trial may not necessarily constitute a flagrant miscarriage of justice. Or, the Emperor Nero is notorious for his flagrant abuse of imperial power. Your turn. Say flagrant. Once again. Flaw. Flaw. Flaw is a noun meaning a slight fault or defect. The value of an antique will decrease if there are noticeable flaws in its construction. Or, Congress may pass legislation to correct flaws in the justice system. Now let's hear you say flaw. Try the word again. Fledgling. Fledgling. Fledgling functions as two parts of speech. It can be a noun, meaning an inexperienced person or a young bird. Many a fledgling has some difficulty learning to fly. Or, fledgling can be an adjective, meaning inexperienced. Fledgling pilots spend many hours preparing for their first solo flight. Your turn. Say fledgling. One more time. Fluster. Fluster. Fluster also functions as two parts of speech. It can be a verb, meaning to make or become agitated or confused. An unforeseen mishap on the stage may momentarily fluster an inexperienced actor. Or, fluster can be a noun, meaning a state of agitation or confusion. Your sister may suddenly rush into the room all in a fluster. Now let's hear you say fluster. And again. Foremost. Foremost. Foremost functions as two parts of speech. It can be an adjective, meaning primary or most important. Daniel Webster was the foremost member of the Senate during the early 19th century. Or foremost can be an adverb meaning in the first place. Good doctors put their patients' welfare foremost in their minds. Well, it's your turn now. Say foremost. Once more. Momentum. Momentum. Momentum is a noun, meaning the force or speed with which something moves. A vehicle moving downhill will gain momentum unless the brakes are applied. Or, any cowboy knows that a stampeding herd of cattle has a momentum all its own. Now it's your turn. Pronounce the word momentum. Once again. Notable. Notable. Notable functions as two parts of speech. It can be an adjective, meaning striking or remarkable. Television shows like 60 Minutes broadcast a few notable comments from viewers every week. Or, notable can be a noun, meaning a distinguished person. A special Lifetime Achievement Award is given to a notable of the entertainment industry on Academy Awards night. Now you try the word. Say notable. Repeat the word. Nurture. Nurture. Nurture also functions as two parts of speech. It can be a verb, meaning to bring up, care for, train, or nourish. Novelists may nurture ideas for years before committing them to writing. Or, nurture can be a noun, meaning training or upbringing. The nurture of the young is every American's concern. Now let's hear you say nurture. Say the word again.
paradox. Paradox. Paradox is a noun meaning a self-contradictory statement that, on closer inspection, proves to be true, or a person with seemingly contradictory qualities. It is something of a paradox that a person can weep tears of joy. Or, the fact that we often hurt those we love is a painful paradox of life. Now you say paradox. Repeat the word. Perjury. Perjury. Perjury is a noun meaning the act of swearing to a lie. Judges often remind witnesses that perjury is a criminal offense, or at lovers' perjuries they say, "Jove laughs." Now it's your turn. Say perjury. And again. Presume. Presume. Presume is a verb meaning to assume or suppose, or to dare to take liberties. We should not presume to judge what we do not understand. Or a friend may presume on your time once too often. Now say presume. Try the word again. Prior. Prior. Prior is an adjective meaning earlier or former. A defendant's prior criminal record may not be admissible in court. Or, cabinet members of a prior administration are rarely asked to stay on when a new president takes office. Your turn. Say prior. One more time. Proficient. Proficient. Proficient is an adjective meaning skilled or capable. Athletes who compete in the triathlon are proficient in three sports. Or, your mom may be a proficient seamstress. Now you say proficient. Repeat the word. Salvo. Salvo. Salvo is a noun meaning a sudden burst of anything, especially gunfire, or a spirited verbal attack. The beginning of the new year is traditionally greeted with salvos of fireworks. Or a talk show host may shower a guest with a salvo of abuse. Now it's your turn. Say salvo. One more time. Vigilant. Vigilant. Vigilant is an adjective meaning wide awake, watchful, or alert. A babysitter must always be vigilant. Or, a vigilant night watchman may prevent an attempted burglary. Now you say vigilant. And again. Wrath. Wrath. Wrath is a noun meaning intense anger. Many a hapless courtier felt the sting of Henry VIII's royal wrath, or the wrath of the tornado wrought unimaginable damage on the community. Well, by now you know the drill. Say wrath. And again. <laughs>